All right. Hi, everyone. We're back. Still with Donna here. <laughs> same, same place. Um, so now we're going to um, talk a little bit about the lower face and how we rejuvenate that. Um, you know, just in looking at Donna, she has started to develop a little bit of some nasolabial folds on either side, mainly also because of the descent of the mid face, the fat pads here, the superficial fat pads, which cause that nasolabial fold. And when the superficial fat pads come down into the jowl area and the jowl fat pad, we start to see the marionette lines. And because on this right side, she was a little bit lower and had a little bit more tissue ptosis, it is a little bit worse on this right side than this left side. And then because there was a little bit of interest or during the break mm -hmm. to have her lips rejuvenated, even though I promised her that I would not inject her lips, we are going to do a small amount of lip cannula so everyone can see it. Um, and then and then also address some of the perioral lines and give her a little bit more shape to the lip. So a couple of things I just want to talk about, and one is we're using the expression technology in the lower face. As I mentioned earlier, this is really some of my favorite products for this area because you're moving the tissues a lot. And you know what I do is when you turn this way and take a look right here, when I pull this superficial jowl fat pad back, you see there's tissue that moves right here, this jowl, and you can see it's bound down right about here, right? You can see. So that is called the mandibulocutaneous ligament. So when I'm doing facelift surgery, the first thing I do when I make an incision underneath the chin is to release this. And I tell people, there's, and when you look straight ahead, there's no, in my mind, there's no natural looking amount of filler that you can put up in the mid face to lift the jowls. It's just, it's such a far, and we're talking about levers and pulleys, it's such a far stretch to really affect a lot on the jowl area and this marionette area. So I say there's only two ways to correct the marionette lines. One, we can lift it, right? You can pull the muscle up and lift it, or two, we can camouflage it. And we camouflage it by putting some filler in this area, and I like Restylin Define and Restylin Refine in this area to kind of camouflage this down to the mandible. Now, this is one area that's really important because what we have here is inserting on the modialis, which is where a lot of the muscles insert at the corner of the mouth and it kind of comes down like this and like this, we have a muscle that runs in this direction, right? That's the DAO, depressor anguli oris. It does what it says. The name implies what it does. So it depresses the angle or corner of the oris, the mouth. And then we have another muscle running in this direction, right? And that's the DLI. The depressor labii depresses lip labii inferioris, right? This area is the only area of the entire face where we have two muscles directly on top of each other. And on top of that, they're pulling in two separate directions. So the DAO is pulling this way and the DLI is pulling this way. So they're overlapping and rubbing. And I know George is out there somewhere, but I, don't, I forgot what he calls it, but this area has that direct rubbing of two muscles on top of each other. And what happens is the more you put deeper product into this area, it's, it, it can, it, it's at the whims of these muscles. So the muscles can push it laterally, especially the DAO. And I was dealing, when you, were, when you put a little bit more of a uh, higher G prime product, for example, Restylane Lift or Restylane in this area, you know, it wasn't that you would see it, but the patients would feel maybe a little bit more of a bump there. And that's due to the fact that the muscle action is kicking it out. So in this area specifically, this is one of the areas where I like to use the Refine Define products. And I like to use them actually more superficially here above the layers of the muscle. 
And the reason why I like to go above the layers of the muscle and just in that kind of deep dermal subcutaneous plane is because then they're not su subject to the, the movement of those muscles and you can just layer almost like a thin coating down here in order to help prevent the, the product from getting moved around. So the other thing is we're, we are gonna address her, just some of her lip lines and, um, and her mouth. When we use all these other products, Restylane Silk is indicated for both peri, or it was actually the first product that had a dual indication for both perioral lines as well as lips. And I like to use it in what I'm calling a little bit more of a mature lip. So when the lip has lost a little bit of structure and we want a little bit more definition, I like to use Restylane Silk in those cases. So we're gonna use a little bit along the vermilion border to give her back a little bit of structure. And then for the perioral lines, I'll probably use a little bit of Restylane Refine in this area. So just in assessing Donna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use about one syringe of Restylane Define per side. And what I mean by that is nasolabial folds as well as this lower facial area. And then we'll use a syringe of Restylane Refine to kind of come back and really be the, the icing on the cake into some of the fine lines. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll finish off if we have time with a little bit of uh, Restylane Silk in the cannula. So I'll stop talking and getting to injecting. So ready? One, two, three. So I'm injecting right at that deep dermal subcutaneous junction. I like to inject retrograde. And I also like to come in not just straight in the nasolabial fold, but I come in as an angle laying down product as I go. And you can really tell the layer, if, if, if you're watching a lot of people inject, you can really tell the layer of injection based on what the needle does. So when there's a little drag like that on the needle, you know that the injector is at the right level because they're meeting some of the resistance from the dermis. When I see a person put a, the needle in there and it easily glides, that means they're too deep, mainly because they're then in the soft tissues or the fat level, the, the subcutaneous fat, mainly because there's less resistance there to the needle. I'm gonna start here and again, I like to come all the way up to the oral commissure and I'll show you what I like to do for the oral commissure. I like to do a little bit of like a cross hatching. So first, I'm just addressing it here and then I'll come from above kind of all the way into essentially the lip border. I, I am stopping injecting before I hit the marionette line. But I am truly above both the DLI and the depressor anguli oris in this case. So now I'm gonna put a little bit here. Some volume here. I'm filling in that whole triangle I was talking about. And if you look, she was a little bit more pinched on this side. It's hard to maybe see from that angle. Any questions about the level, where I'm injecting? <laughs> Sounds like everyone wants to see the lip cannula. <laughs> Soon enough. We'll put a little bit more in this line here to help camouflage that. Okay, great. Donnie, you want to hold that for me? 
Yeah, so the question from Raleigh was, can we address the benefits of using refine and define with a needle? Absolutely. So refine and define have the best, the best uh, distributed tissue integration. So when we talk about the products and understand the technologies behind NASHA and expression, they're used for different things. So refine and define gets into the interstices of the dermis and the skin better than, for example, the NASHA line. So refine and define is good for areas of movement, but also has a better tissue integration, meaning it gets into the tissues better because it's less particulate and it kind of moves and slides through the tissue a little bit better. That's why, that's actually the main reason, here's a little pressure here. Oh, okay. Um, here, you can bring this down. All right, and so sit up just slightly. And so animate, say January, February, March. January, February, March. Say it one more time. January, February, March. So what happens is when, when she does that, she's moving a lot less on this side, or sorry, a lot less on this side because it has been already kind of modulated or dampened with some of the products that we're using. Give her a small little bruise there. Is that better? Can you see that? Yes, okay. We'll continue to. Let me know. Sure, you can just hold it on this side. Perfect. And I'll have you sit back. I'm gonna do the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna inject a little bit in these nasolabial folds. And what you may notice too is how I hold the syringe. It's a, may, it might be a little bit different than how others hold it, um, mainly because I put the plunger, and if you have smaller hands, a lot of these products are um, difficult to push. So I put the plunger either at the base of my thumb or at my malar eminence when I'm pushing the product out, and because then I'm just squeezing the plunger, I'm just squeezing the product out. I'm only using the small muscles in my hand versus if you're pressing with your thumb, you're actually using the whole, you, you, the long muscles in your forearm to kind of press it out. And I do the same thing with wrestle and lift, especially because that's a product that's a little bit thicker. So when I inject, I'm just squeezing the plunger and putting out just a little bits of product. Okay. Now if you turn away and chin up just a little bit. So it's important also to like position the patient to make it comfortable. So that's why I have them turn away and chin up so that I get more room to work now between her shoulder and her jawline. And I'm gonna come in here. This is again, just working a little bit on that oral commissure coming from above, almost into the lower lip a little bit to support it, not into the lip, but long, right along the lip border, and kind of dragging it out. A little bit of volume here. And this is just to kind of camouflage a little bit of that jowl area. With some of the filler. And this is all technically just the marionette line. Let's see. Good, it's looking good. You know, another question I get is why I'm not aspirating in these areas, um, mainly and especially here. And a question I ask is, what, what vessel, what artery lives in the dermis? And if you think about it, especially in this area, and the answer is none, right? So these are dermal fillers. So technically they should be dermal injections. 
where you get into trouble with like, for example, an arterial injection is when you're in the deep soft tissues, because that's where the arteries and vascular supply lives in this area. But if you can feel really the underside of the dermis when I'm injecting, if you can feel that and, the dr and I feel it with the drag on my needle, I know I'm in a safe plane. I'm not in a level where I can get more of a, uh, a vascular issue by injecting deeper. Okay, so I just injected one syringe of Define per side. Okay, Donna, I'll have you. Mm -hmm. We'll trade you up here. I'm working sans assistant today. So Donna's being a wonderful assistant as well as the model. I know what you're all thinking. I'm not a diva. <laughs> okay, maybe just a little. <laughs> all right. So now what I'm going to do is use the refine really as my, this is the icing, right? So some of the really fine lines and now this is this injection is a little bit more superficial, right? So I'm just injecting with the needle tip to address some of these fine lines. Little poke one, two, three. I'm just putting the needle tip in. And you can really see with this product how it disperses through the tissue and it should be a little bit of a blanch. People are like, are you worried with the blanching that you're causing an issue? No, if you're blanching, I, I will say, I think Refine is probably one of the most, if not the most forgiving products out there. So for these fine little perioral lines, I like just these little Dots here, you just have to be at the right level. Okay, good. Again. Okay. Here's one area too the lip tends to kind of come down and crease here vertically. So I like to just put a tiny bit of product here laterally, intradermally to pop that out so it doesn't push in there. Okay. I'm going to switch it up. Here, Donna, if you want to hold that, I'll take that one from you. Good. Okay, and turn away so we can see on the camera. So she's got a tiny little line here. I'm gonna just use a little, tiny little aliquot. A little bit of refine. You can really see if you're up close how well the refine kind of gets into that line in the skin. We'll put a tiny bit here. And these are definitely intradermal injections. Specifically, if you turn a little bit more towards me, we're gonna get a little bit more of these fine lines here. These are not fun. She's doing great. Question from Charlotte. Can you share how you know what layer you were in when you were that superficial with that little needle? Great question. So the question is how, the question from Charlotte is, how do I know which layer I'm in when I'm that superficial with the bevel of the needle? Well, if you think about the epidermis, the epidermis is about 0.3 millimeters thick, and the dermis is somewhere between 0.8 to 1.2 millimeters thick. And now I'm delivering this with a 30 gauge needle. So 
A 30 gauge needle has a bevel length of about 0.75 millimeters and has an outer diameter of the needle that's 0.3 millimeters. What all those numbers mean is in order to be at the correct intradermal level, you need to just put the bevel of the needle in. So all I, and that's why you'll see a little bit of product extrusion because you know, I'm putting the bevel in. That's why some people inject with the bevel down. That doesn't make sense to me. I like to inject with the bevel up so that I can just see the bevel go in and then I put some product in. And then you get a little bit of extrusion, not a, a ton. How's that coming off here? Is it looking good on the TV? We're almost done finishing up. Then down his favorite part, we're gonna do a little bit of cannula lip injections. Okay, good. Same thing here. You can see how the lip kind of creases and it makes this line here. So if you just put a little bit, just laterally, Kind of pops the lip out right in that area. Good. I'm just going to get a little bit more if there's any on the lower lip. I'll have you switch. Oh, it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and hold over here. All right. Let's clean her up. I'm just going to do a couple of these lower lip lines. Great. Excellent. Okay. We used almost here. You can hold that for a second. And just hold right there. Okay. I'm going to clean her off. We're going to do a little bit of wrestling silk with a cannula and a tiny bit of needle. So everywhere that I inject, I'll take this one. I'm just putting mm -hmm. a little arnica on here. Um, everywhere that I inject on the lip, I like to use, when I'm using wrestling silk, I like to use a cannula for some things, just like in the mid face, and a needle for other things. I think the needle provides a good amount of, um, the needle provides a good amount of, uh, uh, definition um, in when you're talking about like the border um, it does a really good job for the fine precise areas definition border also filtral columns and things like that and then the cannula does a great job for just volumization right in the same in the same way that it, it works in the mid face when you want to be precise accurate get the 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 fine lines, perioral lines, you can't inject that with a cannula in my, in, my, uh, in my mind. So I'm tending to use, in those cases, I tend to use the, the needle. But when we wanna give volume to the tubercles or the pillows of the lip, the cannula works great. It's a little bit less bruising and it really does a great job of, um, of easily volumizing the lip. So I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. Okay. So we're going to take, for the lip, I like to use a 27 gauge inch and a half long cannula and just open slightly for me. Good. A little bit more. Good. And I like to make my poke right just barely in the commissure. People are coming way out here. It doesn't make, a sen make sense to me, in my mind, just because then what happens is the, the poke is not hidden in the lip. Again, I'll make the poke on the other side. Open just a little bit and just right in that corner, that oral commissure area. Okay. 
Okay, and close and relax. Sorry, I'm spending time mm -hmm. blotting. All right, and just open gently, a little bit more. So the key really with lip injections with a cannula is to use your off hand, and I do this, I call it like the fish hook. I'm kind of got my finger in there. You just wanna get the cannula tip in, okay? And then your other hand is working just as much as your injection hand. And I'm stretching out the skin. I'm putting the skin on stretch, little bit of pressure, one, two, three, just right at that wet dry border. Little bit of volume. We'll do one more pass. Okay, same thing. Fish hook, stretch out the skin. I'm putting the cannula right into that little opening entry port that we made. Sometimes it's harder than others to find. Make one, make it one more time. Open. You can do a little bit of a track towards the direction you want to go. Okay. Good. Now once it's in here, again, same thing. I'm using my fingers to stretch out the lip tissue. Okay, just a little bit in her lips. I promised her I wouldn't do a lot. Okay. The same thing, I'll have you look straight ahead. Okay. I'm using my fingers to stretch out the lip tissue. Small amounts. Layering it. And the same thing, coming into the lower lip. Just putting a little bit of volume in. Okay. So I've used just under a half a syringe. The final little bit I'm going to use is with the needle and I'm just going to use that to volumize along the vermilion border to give her a little bit more structure to the lip. Okay. okay. Same thing. Stretching the tissue. I start about a needle breath from that GK point. Ready? One, two, three. A little pinch. Just slow injections right in that submucosal plane, right along the border and just open slightly. Good. Good. Come around to the other side. Go ahead and turn away. Same thing, I stretch it with my off hand. A little bit right along the vermilion border. Just open slightly. Good. Excellent. Now we're going to inject a little bit again along into that lower lip along the border. Almost done. Good, and turn towards me a little bit. Perfect. Okay, great. So we used about three quarters of the syringe. Just a little bit. I'm just going to touch up a tiny bit on this side. She has a little bit of asymmetry to her lip. Great. Is it 
the question from, where is that from? The question from Charlotte, Charlotte was, what product does he like for the mental crease and also what would I like for the radial cheek lines? Um, those are both on label for uh, Wrestling Refine and I use it there. Um, we can even show a little bit. She has a little bit of a mental crease so we can put, I have a little bit of Refine left. I'll kind of show that. Any other questions while I get ready to finish this? And I'm sorry, what was the question? They want to see Disport. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is finally for the mental crease. Same thing. We're, we're working on the dermis. That's why this line is there. It's intradermal. So these injections are really right intradermal. Along the mental crease. Disport, disport, disport. <laughs> All right, you guys, and you guys already saw um, me demonstrate the disport um, in uh, Donna's glabella, but I used 50 units there. But she's looking great. Oh, yeah, I used a, a 1.5 reconstitution with disport. So basically, when we use these <laughs> syringes, Basically, I draw it up to 25 here, which is every 0 0.05, sorry, every 0 0.05 is 10 units. So if you draw up to 25, then it's 10 units in the proceris, 10 units in the head of the corrugator, 10 units in the tail of the corrugator, and the same on the other side, in the head and the tail of the corrugator. It's really easy. That's an on-label reconstitution is 1.5, and that's what I use in my practice. Any other questions? Let's give a hand to Donna. Wow, you were a, uh, a rock star and your lips don't look crazy. They just look a little bit better. Okay. All right, let's bring her up. Got, we don't really look straight. And, yeah, yeah, look okay. straight ahead. So what we did for, for Donna, you can see we have a little bit of improvement in the mid face, in the nasolabial folds. I don't like it where the nasolabial folds are completely obliterated, right? Like simians or apes don't have any lines there, so you should have a little bit, but I think they're definitely improved. And then we kind of just improved the lower face down here, turned the corners of the mouth up, and then worked on some of these fine lines in her perioral area mental crease and just gave her a little bit of lip volume. She had some asymmetry to start, but smile big. But I think it just looks better. How many syringes used on the current patient in the chair? So how many syringes did she get total? You can sit back now. Um, we used a total of three syringes in the mid face um, of Restylin Lift. We used two syringes of uh, Define in the lower face, we used like a half a syringe of Refine to three quarters of a syringe, and then we used uh, three quarters of a syringe of uh, Silk in her lip. So she's a lucky girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, sit up one more time. They're cheering for you. You're getting cheers even for Columbus, from Columbus. And look straight ahead there. Cool. Thanks again, everyone. It's great to have all my friends too. I like 
would give shout outs to every one of you, but across the country, thanks for uh, joining us. And uh, I hope it was educational. You guys learned a little bit of something. And um, this is just my way of doing things. But, you know, again, there's a hundred different ways to do it.